In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. It's very good to be together, as together as we ever are, this first Sunday after Trinity. It feels a bit as if we're in for the long haul now, having most of our festivals uh, done and behind us. But we look forward expectantly to the future, again to a time when we can be gathered in our building, where we can be together with more than one or two people. We hold in our hearts those who have asked for our prayers and the things which may well have risen for us and for our nation and for our church since the time this was recorded and Sunday morning, the 14th of June. Our intercessions this morning are led for us by Canon Mavis Wilson. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In hope and trust in the promises of God, let us call to mind those things for which we seek forgiveness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gloria in excessus Deo. Et in terra pot sominibus une voluntatis. Amos in benedicimus in. Amos in the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 19, beginning to read at verse 2. They had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now 
Therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St Paul's letter to the Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that sufferings produce endurance, and endurance produces character, and the character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, 
he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for labourers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it, but if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you'll be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for you are to say what will be given to you at that time, for it is not you who speak but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against their parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I speak and may we all hear in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope and hope does not disappoint us. Suffering, endurance, character. What rich feelings these words bring to our attention. Sufferings come close to each one of us, although it's taken different forms, of course, we're all different. Endurance is being shown by everyone, as we lived by the guidelines and by the law, depriving ourselves of much of which we value, much of which makes us, us. And that's before we even call to mind those who've died and their loved ones, those who are putting themselves in harm's way for the good of others. Those engaged in medical research, the endurance they require every day to keep going with the hard slog of research, trial and error, adaptations, more trial and error, 
in order to understand this pandemic better, to develop potential treatments or vaccines. And we haven't even begun to consider schools, the economy, worship, and so on. We're all enduring something. When we consider suffering and endurance, examples are readily available, perhaps. We can think of the people who are suffering or those who are enduring. But what about when we consider character? I wonder if, like me, we're more likely to think of a specific person when we think of character, someone who we know personally, or it could be someone in the public eye or a historical figure. But we're most likely to be able to name those among our own acquaintances, family and friends, as developed character. The people who we admire are those who shine in a way which makes us look up to them or want to imitate them. Character is, as Paul wrote to the Romans, often part of the fruits of suffering and endurance. Character is produced as well as honed through testing. It's interesting just to note that character is less likely to be part of a description of a very young person, unless, of course, they've experienced their own suffering. We ask ourselves, though, does all suffering produce endurance? And is character always a fruit of that endurance? Clearly not all suffering does produce endurance. Sometimes suffering produces bitterness. Sometimes it produces cries for retaliation and revenge. And sometimes suffering produces an inward focus which just eats away at the center of a person. I'm struck by those who've experienced great suffering at the hands of others, but refuse to give in to cries of revenge or retaliation. They choose to move forward, sometimes forgiving and sometimes not, but they become determined not to be defeated by the suffering. This is clear endurance. But there's the endurance also that just weighs people down and produces not character, but bitterness and a self-focus that's not helpful. In Paul's letter to the Romans, he was writing to a people who were then or would shortly be experiencing suffering for their faith. He began the line of thought that we heard in our second lesson by writing this, we're justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have access to the grace in which we stand. This is the context he maps out when he then writes that suffering produces endurance and endurance character. It is within the context of the grace of God. We often overlook this small but so important word. Grace is the English translation of the Greek word charis. It's God's free giving, not of a thing, but of transformation. The Greek fathers boldly called this theosis, a transformation of the whole of life. That is grace, not a thing, but a who. God's giving fully of himself so that we can know God and know that relationship. And it's one which is totally undeserved. God's grace, that is the power we're given through transformed lives, is the context within which suffering can produce endurance. Endurance can lead to developed character, and the character produces hope which cannot disappoint. This happens even when it feels only painful. Of course, we know that suffering is part of the human condition. It's not what we suffer, but it's how we suffer. St. Paul suggests that it's only within the relationship of God's grace that suffering can have its right effects. Suffering, endurance, character, and hope. And hoping is not wishing. Wishing is wanting or desiring something. Hoping is having confidence in the real possibility of fulfillment. 
Wishing focuses on the thing wished for. Hoping is confidence placed in that which can bring it about. This hope doesn't disappoint. Because as Christians, we don't hope for things. We place our hope in God. It's God who's the object of our hope. And that hope doesn't and cannot disappoint. We grow in faith just as we grow physically and intellectually and emotionally. When young in faith, we may pray, as we did as children, for things, for a specific object, for a bike, or a toy, or a holiday. Then we grow into people who learn how to pray for people in difficult situations, things which don't have an instant answer or the outcome we might wish. We grow in an understanding that praying is a relationship, a conversation in which we do more listening than speaking. And as we do this, we see more and more of the God in whom we place our hope. So from the object of prayer being something we wish for, the object of prayer becomes the one in whom we pray, that loving God who gives us grace. Because we all know that sometimes when we pray, God says no, or not yet, or sometimes you go and sort that out yourself, or more to the point, you sort yourself out. Even in those times, we have hope in God. We're disappointed that the outcome wasn't as we'd expected, but our hope has not been diminished. Suffering produces endurance, which is either life-giving or life-defeating. With hope, it can be life-giving. Endurance produces character, shaped by an awareness of God's grace. Character which is hopeful, honest and may be an example to others, even in the face of extreme hardship and pain. I once heard Desmond Tutu describe Christians as being imprisoned by hope. Imprisoned by hope. The context, I think, was a discussion about Zimbabwe and the future. Things were bleak, and of course they still are. He suggested that Christians were a necessary facet of life moving forward in a positive way for the people of Zimbabwe, because Christians are imprisoned by hope. There's nothing else that Christians can do. Christians hope. They hope in God. And our hope is founded in God who has the risen Christ, has taken all humanity to himself, the suffering and the endurance and the character. And God gives it back to us as grace. God doesn't send suffering, and we must never think this. God doesn't send suffering so that it produces endurance. And hope is the outcome. Suffering is part of the human condition. And like with so much of life, it's what we do with it. Christians make an outrageous claim, and it's this, that suffering produces hope. Suffering and hardship and pain will not have the last word. Suffering, hardship and pain will not defeat the human spirit. They will not remove the hope which cannot disappoint. Because we place our hope in God even when it feels fleeting. And this hope is outrageous as well as it's glorious. And of course God's love is outrageous. And that he proved it, that while we were still sinners, Christ died, rose, and is alive for us. That is an outrageous claim. Suffering, endurance, character, hope. We give thanks to God for those people who show us all these things. And of course, we pray that when we ourselves suffer, we may know ourselves held in the grace of God and so can endure that our character will be developed in all honesty and above all that we would place our hope in God. God does not disappoint. Let us pray.
Lord God, your Son, Jesus Christ, showed us the path of suffering and endurance. Give us the same honesty and openness, giving our cares to you, so that as we suffer, we may also endure. And as we endure, please so shape our character that we can allow others to see you, the source of all grace and faith, the one in whom we hope. Amen. Let us affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord our God, as we continue in this time of transition and uncertainty, give us grace to recognise your presence with us and your spirit leading us. As a community of faith, keep us faithful in prayer and reading of scripture, united in fellowship and deepening our care for one another as we find imaginative and gracious ways of being in touch. Lord, hear us, save us and help us. As we continue in this time of transition and uncertainty, we pray for our leaders that they may have strength, resilience and commitment to the common good. Strengthen our archbishops, our bishops in this diocese, Andrew and Joe, all clergy, lay leaders and those who work with them. Strengthen them in spiritual leadership and discernment, in word and in action. We pray that our government may lead us and communicate in ways which inspire trust. We pray for the opposition that they may offer positive insights as they hold the government to account. And we ask for your continued strength for those whose work is mainly unseen, for the civil service, for managers in the NHS, for those who organise the logistics of our transport and food deliveries. We give thanks for the recognition of new key workers and pray for all that they do with thanksgiving. As a society, deepen our commitment to the good of all. And as we look across the Atlantic to the United States with sorrow, pain and strife, help us to see the moat in our own eye and to turn away from all racism and prejudice, recognising all people as your children created in your image. Lord, hear us, save us and help us. 
as we continue in this time of transition and uncertainty, as spring moves into summer, we pray for farmers and market gardeners anxious about the harvesting of their crops. We remember all those in the fishing industry, all naturalists and conservationists, and those who prepare and deliver our food. As talks continue with the European Union, we pray that they may result in the continuing supply of good and safe food and in the care for the environment which we all share. Lord, hear us, save us and help us. As we continue in this time of transition and anxiety, we pray for all who are struggling to cope, for NHS staff who are exhausted or traumatised, for all who have had extra work during the time of lockdown, especially parents trying to work and also attempting to home educate their children. Watch over and heal, we pray, people still in intensive care. Give peace to those who are lonely or anxious about the watch, what the future will be like. And give us all vision and hope that we may change our lives for the better as the result of these experiences. Lord, hear us save us and help us. We pray for all who have died in the faith of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. At this time giving thanks for the life of Les Harfield and we pray for your comfort and healing blessing on his wife and family. Grant us with them we pray a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, hear us, save us and help us. Peace to you from God our Heavenly Father, peace from his Son Jesus Christ who is our peace, peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life and make us branches of the true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you've created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.
We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. In the name of Christ. Alleluia.